Good morning, all of you. So today I'm very excited to take you through uh, practical Kubernetes in two hours. So today we are basically going to set up a lab environment for Minikube. So Minikube is nothing but a single node uh, Kubernetes environment, uh, which is very, very uh, good if you really want to practice in your uh, local environment. So before you really move to EKS in AWS or GKE in GCP, so you can uh, see, uh, you know, my environment, I'm basically making the use of AWS EC2 instance. So I have created the inbound rule, which basically allows SSH connection from my IP address, public IP address. And I, uh, just sorry about that. So you can also see that I am basically using the instance type, which is nothing but T2X large. So which has got 16 GB of memory and four virtual CPUs. And you can also see I am using Ubuntu uh, 20.04 and I am basically using storage, which is nothing but 50 GB, uh, 50 GB for my EBS, general purpose EBS. Uh, then we are going to look at certain other uh, dependencies like, you know, Minikube binaries, kubectl, and we'll be making the use of Docker as a runtime. And if you guys are interested, I will also be uh, demonstrating how you basically make the use of a VS code as one of the ID environment, if you really SS, uh, if you are really establishing an SSH connection to your uh, Ubuntu machine, which is there on the AWS, right? So this is just to make you little familiar. So these are the requirements for the mini cube. And for the safety reasons, I have just selected one of the machine, which has got 16 GB of RAM. So which will not, uh, uh, give me any kind of the slowness for that matter you can also see that 20 gb of disk space is required so for that reason i am basically making the use of uh, 50 gb of the ebs volume and the runtime environment uh, you can pretty much use any of the runtime environments uh, but i am basically making the use of docker as a runtime uh, so without any delay let me uh, so for example this is my uh, notepad file and I will be following a series of these steps and uh, so I would also be uh, asking you to you know follow along with me so I have al already established my SSH connection uh, to my local machine so the first command which I am going to do is you know uh, so I am just uh, trying to update so it will take a second So almost getting completed. Uh, so just make sure that uh, sure to follow along with me. So now I will again be running this particular command. So, so it will take a little bit of the time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we are pretty much done with the upgrade as well. So you can see that I've got the terminal back. So let me clear my screen. And if I again go back to my, uh, so you can see that uh, if you are using the Ubuntu as a machine, uh, it uh, most probably you will have these kind of the dependencies installed already. Like uh, we are looking at curl, we are also looking at apt transport https. So, anyways, I will run this particular command. Uh, just give me a sec. Again, I will be pasting these. Uh, so you can see that this particular package is already installed and already in the latest version. Uh, so that is taken care of. So again, I move back to my notepad file. So it's very, very important, you know, uh, if you install this particular package or, or without that, you might come across an error, you know, so uh, let me do that. So it should take a second. Uh, let me clear my screen. Uh, let me move on. So as I suggested that I will be basically making the use of Docker as a runtime. So let me do that. So I will be making the use of the convenience script. So I have downloaded my Docker file. So uh, you can see that I have downloaded this script. So I will be executing that particular script in the next. So let me execute this particular script. So it should take a second. And uh, you know, uh, till the time it is happening, I just wanted to show you if you visit this particular URL. Uh, so this is what I am using. Uh, you know, I am just trying to download this particular uh, shell file and. Uh, and you can also uh, execute that particular command subsequently, right? So let me go back to my terminal once again. So it should take, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so. 
so yeah you can see that uh, the now the docker version is already docker is already installed and but however i am getting permission denied so you know let's try to fix that uh, so you know i will be moving on to uh, so for example uh, if you see this particular error you know you can see that uh, it is basically giving you that we do not have enough permissions for var run docker socket file right so let me try to uh, uh, let let us try to retrieve the permission what is the permission so again we are getting the permission denied so what we can do is uh, you know so uh, we can add basically our ubuntu standard user uh, to this particular uh, we can basically grant execute level of the permissions or we can add docker uh, we can basically add standard user ubuntu into docker as a group so that we will get access to a docker socket as a file right let's try to do that so this is very very important step you know make sure that you are following along with me uh, else you know you might come across that your mini cube might not be working as intended right so if i do that uh, so you can see that in the docker command i basically add uh, i basically add you know uh, the my standard user which is nothing but ubuntu into the group which is nothing but docker right so this is how we do it so for example if i try to execute uh, this particular uh, command once again and let's see now what are the permissions uh, so okay we are not able to access till Uh, however it has already fixed an issue you know if we are trying to run the command docker version uh, it is not basically giving any kind of the warning or permission denied error or something right so this is what uh, so our intention is basically to add our standard user into docker as a group so which we have already done it just make sure that you uh, you follow this particular step else you will come across some kind of the issue later right and if you for forgot to add your standard user into the docker as a group uh, make sure you do that and once you have done that you know again terminate your uh, ssh session and try to establish the ssh session once again uh, so that you will be good right so just make sure that this uh, particular step is very important now i will be uh, going back to my uh, so let me clear my screen uh, now i will be uh, downloading my uh, uh, you know mini cube binaries so let me curl so it will take a second so if i do ls you can see that i have got a mini cube binaries already so now what i am going to do is i am going to move this particular binary file into the bin directory so you can see that i am basically trying to move the binary inside mini cube directory which is under bin directory right i've done that and i will also be granting execute level of the permissions so just follow along with me you will not be getting any kind of the error so i have done that so now what i can do is you know uh, i can also try to uh, so for example uh, so let's try to ls minus l i am just trying to uh, uh, check the permissions so for example you can see that we have already uh, gotten execute level of the permissions and so we are good there just wanted to show you once again because uh, you know so you can see that execute level of the permissions is already there in the mini cube as a directory which is under pin directory right so we are good there and now we can check the mini cube version so that should not be a problem and uh, we can validate that this is the version of a mini cube right now uh, we will be moving on to cube ctl so cube ctl is responsible for managing your uh, you know k8 clusters so don't worry about the commands i will be putting all the commands which i am using in uh, the video description box so that you can use it so if i do ls you can see that i have already downloaded cube ctl uh, related binaries so again you know again so example before i move on ls minus l so again you can see that for cube ctl we do not have execute level of the permissions so i will again be following the same steps moving on to the bin directory as well as a granting execute level of the permission so let's do that so let me copy the command and paste it so we have done that i will clear my screen and now i am basically granting execute level of the permission to this cube ctl directory right so i can again do ls minus l for this particular directory whether we have got execute level of permission or not uh, but however it is not so let us do that i think it's better right 
so if if we do that so you can see that we have got execute level of permissions right so so we are pretty much done with what we really wanted to uh, so for example if i try to check kubectl version client uh, so we are getting any kind uh, we are getting a warning but however this should not be a problem at this point in time you know you can see the version uh, so let me clear my screen so now uh, what i can do is i now we are pretty much done with all the dependencies we can basically try to start our mini cube cluster so it will uh, it will take some time and you know so before it it does that i will just pause a video for a for a bit so if i go back to my terminal once again you can see that uh, we have successfully uh, provisioned or configured mini cube setup so i think we are good now so if i clear my screen if i try to check the mini cube uh, mini cube status so you can see that uh, type is control plane host is running kubelet is running api server is also running and kube config is also configured right uh, so i think we have successfully done it and i just wanted to show you the one last command so if we do that uh, you can see that what is the ip address that is a basically uh, you know assigned or allocated to your uh, you know your node so you can see that uh, 192.168 something is the ip address that is basically assigned to your uh, node and you can what you can also do is mini cube ip right so if you do that again uh, you will be getting the same thing uh, so we are pretty much done what we really want to cover in this particular video and just you know i would be uh, very much excited to share uh, the practical kubernetes in two hours and where we'll be looking at all the uh, you know all the agenda of what what we have had so for example if i go here so this is what we are looking at really uh, in um, in in our playlist practical kubernetes in 2 hours so we are pretty much done with the very first uh, step so we have the lab setup done we have a mini cube single node k8 cluster already running so we'll be looking at all the other things you know uh, to get started with practical kubernetes you know so you can already see the agenda here and let me know what you really think about this particular video in the comment section and see you in the next take care